Hi, my name is Carmen Small. I'm here with the Cervelo Bigola cycling team in Majorca doing our team training camp for the year. And I wanted to welcome you guys to the Vox Women's Cycling Show. Coming up in this month's show, we find out what the top women's teams have been up to over the off-season. We take a look at the year ahead with Rochelle Gilmore. We have a new set of top tips for this Olympic year. And we take a unique look at the Ladies' Tour of Qatar. Welcome back to the Vox Women Cycling Show at the start of the 2016 season. Plenty's been happening here in Europe over the winter break. The top women's teams have been training hard and some of the new teams have been getting to know each other as well. We visited some of the training camps to find out what's been going on. just going to be a lot of you know team bonding stuff um, you know climbing obviously and, and long rides but um, also I don't know just yeah I get to, to meet the staff get to meet the girls and get used to the, the equipment and stuff and we have a lot of time so we can work on a lot of other things. So, try to suffer as much as I can. <laughs> I think we all just gave it a little go today to um, see how the legs are feeling. Um, yeah, I felt good. A little bit tired from um, the endurance that we've been doing over the past few days, some long hours. Um, but good to test the legs out and just to um, enjoy the, the beautiful scenery and the beautiful climbs. A new team to join the UCI ranks this year is all British team Drop Cycling, who are making the most of the mild weather and scenic climbs in Mallorca for their training camp. I'm new to the team so it was a bit of introduction and um, getting to know all the riders and yeah we've just been going out on some rides. It's hilly um, and all the roads are really grippy and the wind just makes all the easy rides tough as well. <laughs> it's been really good fun, it's a really nice bunch of girls and I've felt really at home and I'm like the youngest on the pro team next year so I'm a bit of a baby but yeah it's nice to know that I've got the older ones looking out for me. Yeah it's been really good, obviously uh, enjoying the sun. Um, a little bit windy to start with, but that seems to settle down. Um, and yeah, no, it's just been really nice to go and do some of the big climbs on the mountain. And um, it's my first time on Lanzarote, so it's just nice to find my way around. As well as putting in plenty of miles out on the road, the teams are preparing for the season ahead in all sorts of ways. Hannah Barnes lets us in on a day in the life of the Canyon Shram racing team. Hi everyone, this is the Canyon Shram at Training Camp in Palma, Mallorca. Uh, we've been doing some early morning exercises on the beach, as you can see from the girls. I'm going to go and join in. So after the exercise on the beach, we come in and have breakfast. They have four to five hours today, so there will be numerous trips up to the buffet to go and get more fuel, uh, food to fuel for the ride. Uh, so the early training camps in December are when we do all the team photos. So we're all posing, ready to have pictures taken. <laughs> I think on the calendar, the schedule it is four to five hours, so it's a long day. Um, they're doing the most scenic route. Um, they're doing the Sacalabra, which I call the Cobra because it's not very enjoyable. 
be a really good day for them. It's a long day, but they had an easy day yesterday, so hopefully they're fresh for it. It's a beautiful climb, you know, it's it's not that steep, but it's got these amazing switchbacks. It was perfect for, I had to do some efforts, some high intensity efforts. Some of the girls had to do some sort of low cadence strength work. And I think it fits, fits for all of us and, you know, it's a stunning view up here. Uh, so after they get back from their ride, there's numerous things going on. Um, Today we've got um, some saddles being tested. We're um, trying to design a custom saddle, so we're doing a few tests and what saddle is good for us and what saddle isn't good for us. And the other thing that happens after a ride is everyone comes and has a massage from the Swannies. Um, it's a relaxing time of the day where most people fall asleep. The start of the World Tour is just around the corner and we're here to talk to Rochelle Gilmore, owner and team manager of Wiggle High Five, about her predictions for the season ahead. Well, with the Women's World Tour just about to begin for the first time, I'm really excited about the first race, Strata Bianchi, for many reasons, but the tension's just building with all of the athletes, the top athletes, and I think coming into the season and not knowing what form everybody's in makes that first Women's World Tour race so exciting. Well, I hope one of the Wiggle High Five riders uh, win. Uh, Elisa Longo Borghini and Emmy Johansson have to be a very good duo for that, that type of race, Estrada Bianchi, and I think they both come into the season in relatively good form. Uh, Megan Gagne, after last year, um, I think that gives us an idea that she's very strong early season, that we can expect her to be there. But uh, what we saw last year was that uh, I think strength in numbers towards the end of the race is what wins or loses uh, Strada Bianchi or a tough race at the, at the start of the season. So I think we'll see a little bit of a battle of the top teams. I think uh, you can't go past the, the on that type of course, bowls and uh, rubber bank being the, the, the two teams that are really going to throw it out there. But uh, you have the combination there of uh, Lizzie Armistead and um, Ellen van Dijk. We know that that's a very, very competitive um, combination. But uh, van der Bregen's probably going to be the solo threat, I think, for the win there at Tour of Flanders. Well, I mean, absolutely, it's a goal to win Tour of Flanders. That's a, it's a really big goal of ours again. It was uh, something that probably our riders and team as a whole didn't realise how big actually it is to win the Tour of Flanders. And um, it's a specific goal of ours again in 2016. And we have been looking at that already since winning last year, how we can strengthen our team in order to win that. The teams are targeting this race because it's a world tour race. It's a very hard um, um, race for preparation for other events. And they're gaining massive media exposure at it and just getting a big high from being in front of all the fans. What's happened over the last couple of years is that athletes have realised that it's a very big race for themselves to win, personally. So the desire to target that race and win that race for individuals has got bigger and bigger. It's a very big goal of ours and yes, we have a plan to, to go there and win, but uh, which, with which rider we're not quite sure yet. Yeah, well, look, it's um, it's the hardest stage race there is for women, the Giro d'Italia, and possibly the most prestigious stage race that we have. And I think that, uh, like any other year, but maybe even more so this year in 2016, the winner of the Giro is going to be a rider that focuses on that one race 100%. It's 
really the world championship for the sprinters. That race on the Champs-Élysées also for the men. There's just so much prestige in winning on that one day. So there's a lot of riders that have been thinking about this race since last year. Obviously there's only one winner, but coming into that race on the Champs-Élysées this year, having more familiarity with the course and with the what it actually means to win that race, uh, I think that it'll be more of an attacking style race, more riders trying to take their chance. And uh, obviously, there will be a little bit of fear, I think, in the riders, given that there were so many accidents in last year's race and it's so close to the Olympics. But at the same time, there can only be one winner at the Olympics, and this race is up for grabs on the Champs-Élysées. So I think it will be hotly contested. And like I said, the prestige of it, it's like for, for a sprinter, it's really, really like winning a world championship. I think there's a very good chance that the Women's World Tour could come down to that one last one day race in Madrid. And I mean, for example, what if we come, it's for me, it's, it's very possible that we come down to that last race um, between a rider like Anna van der Bregen and Emma Johansson fighting it out, um, having their teams right behind them. I think it's going to be a spectacle in Madrid. I think the fact that we have an Olympic Games that in uh, this year, in 2016, that's very, very much suited towards the, the climbers, and then a World Championship at the end of the season, very much suited to the sprinters. Two courses that are completely different, enables our sport, and women's cycling, to have a bit of a longer season, but to have excitement and competitiveness the whole way through. Three, two, one, fast women. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Now we have our first Vox Diary of the Year, brought to you this month by Annemiek van Vleuten. Hi, welcome to my uh, Vox uh, Diary from Tenerife. Uh, I'm now in uh, El Tijde for uh, altitude training for three weeks to prepare uh, myself for the Spring Classics. And I think uh, the preparation is going well, so uh, I'm getting used to uh, the cold uh, temperatures and get ready for the Spring Classics. Uh, this behind me, I make a... 360 degrees. I did some good training here, but uh, yeah, we had a lot of snow, and it was in 35 years ago that there was so much snow here. Behind me, you see the El Tijde, and uh, I'm now at uh, 2,200 uh, altitude meters, together with some other pro teams preparing here. Uh, yeah, it's perfect now to uh, to train here. It's a very quiet road because the roads are closed. Um, I had to do some indoor training sessions, but I'm really glad uh, that I can uh, now go outside. Um, it's uh, been a special uh, three weeks here with uh, yeah, all the snow, but it's, it's very beautiful. Uh, I did some good training, so I was happy to finish my long training rides before the snow uh, came. And uh, I was also one day up there at 3,700 meters by cable car. It's not possible today, but. When I was also training here in short sleeves, short shirt, so um, had some good uh, training. Uh, now, now are two days left, so easy rides and then uh, go down to Belgium and uh, start, uh, start the Spring Classics. So, uh, I'm from Tenerife, El Tijde. See you soon! Okay, ready? My top five tips for the elimination race are One, to make sure you keep good position and stay near the front. Two, to make sure you concentrate on your coach. He's always useful to tell you how many people are left. Three, to make when you get to about seven or eight to go, I always tend to go to the back because it makes life a bit easier. You're a lot more in control. Um, four would be you make sure that you, all the moves you do are legal. So staying off the coat is obviously a major one if you're going to go underneath. And five would be if you make it to the last two, to make sure you're positioned well for the sprint. Welcome to the Ladies Tour of Qatar 2016, Fox Women. 90 riders from 15 teams took to the start line to race in the hot and windy desert in the Ladies Tour of Qatar. 
Hi, I'm, uh, I'm feeling good and I'm excited about this first stage of the Ladies Tour of Qatar. Yeah, for me and my team, it's the first year, first race of the year, of course. So, yeah, we we want to race strong together as a team and support each other. And uh, yeah, we we definitely hope for a stage victory. It's always a good start of the season, uh, good racing here in Qatar. And this year, it's going to be even more special as the uh, World Championships going to be here too. I'm looking forward to it and. I think everyone's a bit more nervous because it's the first one of the first races of the year, so hopefully uh, it all goes well. Stage one saw the riders race 97 kilometers from Katara Culture Village to Qatar University along the very desert roads the elite peloton will tackle at the World Championships in October. And it was Kirsten Wheels of High Tech Products who took the spoils on day one. <laughs> it wasn't easy. <laughs> I saw on my uh, SRM, my heart rate, the maximum was about 200, so it's not easy, but yeah, it's always cool to win, but it's never easy. How do you celebrate after every win? <laughs> I celebrate. <laughs> yeah, I think we just have fun with, with the team, and for this for me, that's really in, important to have fun and enjoy the, the good atmosphere. But uh, the most important thing is uh, in this race we have uh, a lot of new riders in our team so we have to find more confidence in each other I think and that's the, that's, that's the most uh, important thing that we have to uh, learn in this race. It's a hard day today, yeah, with okay. a lot of wind and echelons, after, I think, um, split up after I think. Uh, 46k or something it split up, and it came all together at the end. But yeah, we missed it actually in Florja de Pontjar, so that was uh, a bit sad, but for the rest it was a good day. Yeah. Um, from yesterday yeah. we already know how it looks like tomorrow, yeah. and I think it's going to be... Uh, yeah, if there's side wind, then it's going to be a hard stage again. Katrin Garthut raced into the gold jersey for Orica AIS, while overnight leader Wheels lost almost four minutes on a day dominated by crosswinds, crashes and mechanicals. Day three dawned and the high winds were on everyone's minds ahead of the 112 kilometer stage. Yeah, it's a hard race and uh, yesterday we were with a lot of riders in the first group. So we, today we try again and uh, we hope to uh, do a good team effort. First day was okay. Um, I was happy I could do seven for the, for the team. But I hope today I, I can be there. Well, I like it, yes, but today it's really windy, so maybe a little bit less. Yeah, you feel it, you hear it, it's a lot of wind. And uh, yeah, if you're not there, you're gone. 
Crosswinds in the opening two kilometres blew the peloton apart and a 13 rider breakaway broke free, leaving the peloton fighting a losing battle to close the gap. The group managed to stay away before an attack with 1,500 metres to go. Yeah, super tough. It was uh, racing uh, right from the gun. We started uh, at kilometre zero and it was one big fight to get in the echelon and I, I was happy I made it and then uh, we just had to work uh, 112k exactly, I think. So uh, yeah, it was a really tough day out there. We got the yellow jersey and this was our goal, so we will try to keep it for tomorrow. Yeah, it, it will be a hard race again. It might it mean it's the last stage, day four, everyone is a bit tired, but yeah, we try to defend the jersey. After the attritional battle in the wind on stage three, the fourth and final day dawned. So how do you prepare yourself mentally before the final stage? That's a good question. Well, we have chat and uh, music, go through the team plan, try to activate the muscles, eat a lot. It's a preparation. Uh, windy, sunny, luxury. Well, we have a really nice hotel. It's, uh, yeah, it's always a pleasure to be here. <laughs> Stage four saw the riders tackle 73 kilometers from the Aspire zone to the Doha Corniche. A bunch sprint was inevitable and all eyes were on wheeled. But it was Wiggle High Five's Chloe Hosking who powered to the line to take the stage victory. It was super fast, my team get, did a great job of positioning me and everything and then in the end I just ended up on Kirsten Wilde's wheel and um, yeah, I just kicked it, kicked at the right time, timed my sprint really well and um, came away with the win, so really very happy about that. <laughs> Trixie Warwick finished safely in the main bunch to secure overall victory and the gold jersey for Canyon Shram. Yeah, it feels great, I mean it's the first tour of the season and the team worked so well together, all four stages, so I think it's, it's really good to start like this into the season because it gives us more confidence for the team. For us it's important because we have a new team, new sponsor and it's nice to start into the season like this. That's it for this time. Thanks for watching. Join us next month when the Spring Classics will be getting started and we'll bring you highlights from Strada Bianca.